Welcome everybody, it's Mr. Begums back again. So, I'm uh, here in the school, and I came in here to go and get on a whiteboard so I can show you how to subtract fractions. <clears throat> now, I don't know where I'm gonna be next, so I'm gonna try to get this done as quickly as possible, hopefully give you an overview of fractions, because then I gotta get out of here before they catch me. I might be in a new classroom uh, tomorrow, and I might be in a classroom with yours next week, so stay tuned, listen up here so, I can, so you can make sure you understand what I'm going over. So I want to show you how to subtract fractions. Now, the first thing we need to know when we're talking about fractions is what is a fraction? Well, pretty much, if you have something whole, and I always like to think of a candy bar because I'm always hungry, all right? If I think of a candy bar and I divide up that candy bar, let's say I have four friends I want to, or three friends, including me, that I want to divide up. So therefore, I'm going to divide it into four different pieces. So if I divide that into it, what I've just created is some parts out of a whole. So if a whole candy bar is divided into four, four different parts, I have four parts over a whole. Now, let's say I want to, um, let's say I want to keep, uh, let's say I want to keep three of those parts and I only want to give one of those four parts to a friend. So therefore, I've given away one fourth and now what I have is three parts out of the whole. So you can say I have three fourths. Now, in a fraction, we divide how many parts we have or we're dealing with over the whole by what we call a fraction bar. So let's say I have three-fourths, okay? I have three-fourths of the candy bar because what I did was I gave away one-fourth to my friend. Now let's say this girl friend over here wants a piece of my candy bar as well. So I decided to give her a fourth of my candy bar. So if I already have three-fourths and I subtract one more fourth, how much is left for me? Let's take a look. So I said I had three-fourths of a candy bar. I'm going to subtract, I already gave away one to my friend, Fred. But now Jessica over here, I want to give her a part. So I'm going to say three-fourths minus one-fourth, how much am I left with? So if I take these three sections, subtract one more, I'm left with two-fourths. So therefore, I'm left with two more pieces out of, uh, out of four in my candy bar. Now, to make, one thing we've got to make sure is whenever we're talking about fractions, we always want to put our fractions in lowest terms. Meaning, can these two numbers, my top number, which we call our numerator, and our bottom number, which we call our denominator, can they be divided by the same number? And you could say yes. Two can go into two, and two can go into four. Therefore, if I'll divide the top and bottom number by the same number to get it into lowest terms. So two divided by two is one, and four divided by two is two. And you guys should know that two out of four is one half. All right, so you just want to make sure we put it in the lowest terms. So that's the general idea. Now, let's go ahead and work on some extra problems. Okay, so the first one, we have 5 tenths minus 3 tenths. When you're subtracting fractions, we have to make sure that our denominators are the same. And what we're going to do is just simply subtract the numerators. So 5 minus 3 is 2 over 10 parts. Therefore, now I can reduce this again to is a common um, denominator for both these, so I can divide the top and bottom by two to receive one fifth. Now, let's say we have a problem. Let's say that um, I now have, oh, I need to let's say now I have three fourths of a candy bar and I want to subtract one third of another candy bar, how much candy how much parts of a candy bar am I going to have left? Now, it's easy when you have the denominator to the same because you can just subtract the numerators. However, think about it this way, ladies and gentlemen. If I am to subtract three-fourths of a candy bar and subtract one-third of a candy bar, well, my new candy bar, or the new amount that I'm going to have, if I have three-fourths, and look at I might I try to subtract this amount, which roughly relates over here to this amount, I'm left with looks like a quarter plus another little extra part left over. So I don't really know what that value is. So what I need to do is I need to segment, I need to segment my new candy bar into a measuring point that fits for both three-fourths and one-third. And that the way we find that measuring point is finding what we call the LCM, or the least common multiple. So I need to find the least common multiple for my two fractions. So I look at three and four, and I say, all right, what multiples do these two numbers share? 
Well, four, four times one is four, four times two is eight, four times three is 12, four times four is 16. Over for the threes, I have three, six, nine, 12, and 15. And what you notice is the smallest number that they share is 12. So what I can do is I can now break up my new fraction, my, my result into 12s. Okay, now I know this is not gonna be even, but what you could say is, well, how many 12s is one third? And you could say, well, that's gonna be four of them, right? And then how many 12s is going to be three fourths? Well, let's look at it. To get this to be 12, <clears throat> I need to multiply by three over three. So therefore I have nine twelfths minus, to get this to be 12, I need to multiply by four and over four. So I'll have four twelfths. So nine, min nine twelfths, which would be this much. So this is equal to nine twelfths minus four twelfths is going to equal how many twelfths? Well, nine minus four is five twelfths. So therefore, one, two, three, four, five. So you could say, if I have this many twelfths minus four twelfths, or nine twelfths minus four twelfths, it's going to leave me with five more twelfths. Let's look at one more example. When I don't have the same denominator, I need to find the common multiple. Five and seven, let's say I have five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, and seven, I have seven, 14, 21, 28, 35, 42. Now sometimes, guys, this can take a long time. Um, it's not always the quickest or the easiest, but sometimes it might be easy to multiply them across, or just multiply your two denominators to find a multiple. It's not always going to be the least common multiple, but it will always give you a multiple. So to get to 5 to 35, which is the smallest, I'm um, not 38, 35. To get to that to be the smallest, I'll multiply times 7 on the top and the bottom. And here, to get this to be 35 on the bottom, I need to multiply 7 times 5. 7 times 2 is 14, over 7 times 5 is 35, minus 4 times 5 is 20, over 35. So therefore, if I have 14 parts, and now I give away 20 parts, I have a negative 6 over 35. So what that means is it's a negative fraction, meaning I actually owe more parts than I really would have. So you can have a positive number minus a negative fraction that is bigger or more than the other fraction will result in a negative fraction. All right, guys, I'm getting a little too loud, and I need to go back to my next class before the principal comes in. So I'm going to leave you guys here. I hope I helped you guys out learn how to subtract fractions, um, but I need to go before they get